Yeah, you look nice. <laughs> Hi, my name is Fainty Balligan. I'm an actor, co-founder of the Green Rider campaign, which is an initiative for actors to use their contractual agreement, riders, to help negotiate for greener sets and greener productions. And most importantly, for tonight, I am an older brother. <laughs> Growing up, it was me, my mum, and my sibling T. Just the three of us. Now, in these kind of situations, big brothers end up with a little bit more responsibility. You end up looking out for them, picking them up from school, cooking for them, giving them advice, telling them not to play with fire, and then they start making their own money and pay for fire spinning lessons. <laughs> I've always had respons <laughs> I've always had responsibilities in my family. So when the local election came along, it was my responsibility to make sure everyone remembers to vote. Yeah, all WhatsApp groups lit up with my face. Don't forget to vote. I text my sibling, this isn't a joke, don't forget to vote. They say they will, I check up later, they don't. Now the big brother part of me is gearing up. Don't be too heavy handed, because I'm sure they've got a reason, but be heavy handed enough that T, my sibling, doesn't repeat them. I go on with the, come on man, I thought we were good. T wasn't registered in the right place, etc., etc. Apologies, left, right and centre, I could, have stopped there, but I'm the big brother. I've got to give it a little bit of vim, you know? Lock the lesson in, you know? T, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> you know how politically engaged I am. I feel like you barely bring it up with me. I've got information for free. Now, I think T had a moment of clarity, actually, because they said very clearly, I quite literally have no idea what's going on, on anything. There's always a war and a crisis, and you may not like this, but I work all the time and I still can't afford sh rent. So when can I engage? None of these people represent me or are honestly interesting. What's the point of me investing when they're all corrupt anyways? I burst out and say, well, not all of them, but that's the general consensus. They lie and nothing changes. It's been like this for ages. I try and find the white right words to fix this feeling that T is having right now, but I, I, I can't. Because I realise we're not talking about voting, really. This isn't a TED talk about voting. We're talking about powerlessness. Who here has ever felt powerless at a point in time? Yes, a lot of us. It's an interesting feeling, right? It's uh, infantilizing, frustrating, unable to move forward, and so we cope. We get it out in other ways. I get it. The idea that nothing I do or feel changes the world that I live in. I look outside my window and I see it's flooding, torrentially raining, ever-changing, because a moment ago it was the year's hottest day, and I remember it wasn't always like this. This is climate crisis. The thing we all know, the monster we can't slay, more extreme weather, four seasons in a month, a week, a day, and food gets more expensive because, you know, it's harder to grow, and that leaks into the class system. Because if you find it hard to afford food now, just imagine where that could go. This is a reality that people who grew up like me and T will have to know. And then there's this idea that all of that is separate to me. That whatever injustices exist, I still have to pay my rent, buy food and find some way to be happy. Keep calm and carry on, right? Whilst at the same time, our government invests in new oil fields that they already have investments in, hold tight, Rishi. <laughs> Criminalise protesting or boycotting or anything that might actually hold them accountable for anything. Of course, T feels powerless. We feel disempowered by this idea that it is all inescapable. That those structures of oppression are too big to take on and so we just get on. 
But what if we go with this idea that these inescapable structures are too big to take on because that must mean they exist in every other part of our lives as a smaller version of themselves. For instance, our working environments. Maybe, just maybe, if I'm able to change this slice of that inescapable structure that I have to deal with on a daily, maybe I change the whole. I'm an actor, if you can't tell. <laughs> I love my job. But the way the industry is run is inexplicably part of that system that we feel is inescapable. Many people overworked, underpaid, made to feel lucky. The lowest paid, most neglected, intersected with racism, sexism, ableism, classism, and on. This includes the builders, the costume and makeup teams, the riggers, the ADs, the runners swerving on the road in the middle of the night, hazy, exhausted or the excessive use of material waste and emissions, providing the conditions for the average film to emit twice as much as Brighton does in a month. Mud. <laughs> Just imagine if I'm able to change that slither that I have access to, maybe, just maybe, I'm able to do something more. Just a year ago, Danusha Samal Will Attenborough and myself, members of Equity, our acting union, launched the Green Rider campaign. We took an existing Green Rider made by BAFTA Albert, the leading sustainability group in film and television in the UK, and we asked for more. Trains, not planes, get diesel out. A facilitated communication between each department so they actually know what we're talking about. You see, we found that the industry culture makes all departments feel like leading actors shouldn't be bothered with climate issues or justice issues, and day players, well, they feel too anxious to ask about any of it. Agents negotiate the best deal for clients, thank you, which often means exclusive cars, trailers, flights, etc., which provides the agenda that our worth is equated to how much we consume. I now think you only care about me if I'm the biggest in the room. <laughs> but a rider's aim is culture change. So instead of our status being measured by how much we consume, what if it was about the leadership and kindness we show? Just imagine if those principles leaked into that greater system we feel oppressed by, that stuff just wouldn't go. Along with the rider, we launched an open letter signed by over 100 established actors. We then trailered the rider with five major productions and three short films. And in some instances, this was the first time there was direct communication between all departments, including actors who had previously been left out to talk about radical sustainability. What can be achieved? And if it can't, how do we get there? Because it's not about being perfect. It's about living in contradiction and changing as much as we can. The collective, collaborative power to demand more is incalculable. T, this is a very long-winded way of me saying I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't have an answer for you on that day. I'm sorry no one told you about this bit. I'm sorry you felt disillusioned because it seems like the system doesn't work and the truth is it doesn't work. And the thing that I think is worse is I try and make you what you're not. I can't make you feel driven to change what we've been given. It's strange to think I should when I know that you're not done. There's a process to it all. We have to grieve. Grieve the idea that all the things we were promised about our lives by this government, by our society, isn't what actually happens. We have to allow that grief for the next phase. But wherever you are on your journey, I want you to look at me. T, I realise that I, even after all this, I still might not be speaking on your behalf. I don't know where you are, but you're here. I still might not reach you. 
but I love you and I'll be damned if you don't take anything away from this, so look at me as I stand here and I represent equity for a Green New Deal. I represent the Green Rider campaign. Hell, I represent every campaign I've ever been a part of. I represent someone who came from where we came from with no money, no power, and no idea how they were gonna be a part of this world. And I want you to look at what we've done. Look at how big we dream. Because I promise you, if and when you want to do something, want to change something, there are people who have and are doing that work. And when you are ready, when you are tired of it, when you are angry enough, we're waiting. Because we need everyone, everywhere, all at once. Because often, it doesn't happen unless you make it happen. Thank you.